In this video, we're going to take a look at the 2024 governor's prediction for the month of July. Now, there are only 11 up for election, and only a couple of these are actually competitive. I've also not really made any changes since a month ago, but we can still go through the states and see if there's anything to talk about. So we'll do the safe states first. These are going to be over a 10-point margin. First, for the Democrats, they've got one state, and that is going to be Delaware. This is a blue state, and it's an open seat, so theoretically, if the Republicans ran a strong candidate, they could make it a little bit more competitive. For the Democrats, they do have an early September primary to get through. So that could be something to take a look at, but for the general election, I don't think it matters too much. The GOP just does not have much of a bench here. They might be putting up their House Minority Leader, and unless something changes, this one is going to be safe for the Dems. Now we've got the safe states for the Republicans, and we've got Utah. Now we know for sure it's going to be incumbent Spencer Cox for the GOP, but like the Republicans in Delaware, the Dems here have pretty much no bench, and even though it wasn't a landslide for Cox in the primary, in the general, I expect him to win this comfortably by a safe margin. Up in Montana, we've got Greg Gianforte, the incumbent Republican, running for re-election. He's going to face Ryan Bussey for the Dems, but I would expect Gianforte to be favored enough to put this into the safe column. It's not at all impossible this could get into single digits, but unless it was a blue wave national environment, Democrats are going to face an uphill climb here. Next door in North Dakota, now we know it's going to be U.S. Rep. Kelly Armstrong for the Republicans. He's very likely to go on and win in the general election, so he's going to get that safe. If we continue west and south into Missouri, this is an open seat to replace Republican Mike Parson. And for a while, it seemed like Jay Ashcroft was going to be the big name to cruise to victory for the GOP nomination. He's the Secretary of State, and his last name has a lot of weight in that state. But the Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe is not going to let him just walk away with it. There's enough undecideds here that it's really anyone's guess. But in the general election, the Democrats don't have a lot going on. Their likely nominee is a state rep. And since it's an open seat, it's possible it could get under 10. But for right now, I think it's most reasonable to think that this stays safe. Next in Indiana, it's another open seat. We've got U.S. Senator Mike Braun for the Republicans. He's the nominee for governor. He's going to face the former Indiana Superintendent of Public Instruction, as well as former Republican Jennifer McCormick. Also on the ballot is a Libertarian candidate who got more than 11% of the vote back in 2020. Like Missouri, because it's an open seat, there's a chance that it could get more competitive, but until something happens, I think it's going to be double digits and safe for Braun the Republican. Then we've got West Virginia. This is an open seat, and for the Republicans, we've got the Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. He's going to face Mayor Steve Williams of the general, and this has become one of the reddest states out there. Now, Governor usually gives the opposite party a chance to be competitive, but at this point, I don't really see anything developing just yet, so this could easily be a landslide for Morrissey. It's easily going to go safe for the GOP. Now, if we go up to the Northeast, we've got Vermont, and Phil Scott is running for term number five. It would have been interesting to see what would happen if Howard Dean ran against Scott. Given that didn't happen, Scott is the overwhelming favorite. He's won by gigantic margins in the past. It's hard to imagine this being much different. He's extremely popular. They love him in this state. He's going to get it by a safe margin. Now we can go down to the likely states. There's only one of them. It's for the Democrats, and it's going to be Washington. This is an open seat to replace Jay Inslee. Washington uses a top two primary system. And right now, the candidates favored are going to be Attorney General Bob Ferguson for the Dems and former U.S. Rep as well as Sheriff of King County, Dave Reichert. Ferguson is going to be a big name. He's already won statewide, and they've not elected a Republican here for governor since the 80s. So it's going to be an uphill climb for Reichert. He's going to need some crossover appeal. And even though it's a blue state, sometimes things change, especially for the governor's office. If they can elect Larry Hogan in Maryland or John Bell Edwards in Louisiana, they can pretty much do it anywhere. So we've got to see which way the national winds are going to blow if Ferguson makes any mistakes, and if Reichard can run a solid campaign with a wide appeal. In the end, Ferguson might win it easily. There's also an outside chance here for a flip, but for right now, I think the safe call is likely for the Dems. Now we can go down to the most competitive states. Let's head all the way back to the East Coast. So we've got New Hampshire. This is going to be an open seat to replace Governor Sununu, and we've got both sides that are going to have to get through a primary. That's going to be in September, and Democrats have to decide if they're going to go with Joyce Craig, who's considered a little bit more moderate, or Cindy Warmington, who's considered a little bit more progressive. It looks like Craig might be the favorite, but for the Republicans, they also have former U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte. She's taken on Chuck Morse, who ran for the U.S. Senate just a couple of years ago, and he was backed by Governor Sununu. So Ayotte looks like she's also the favorite. In the general election, there's no recent polling, but Ayotte has a small advantage. It should be competitive and Democrats could get a flip here. But at this point in election season, I think it's a little bit more likely it's going to stay with the GOP. So you might put it at lanes, but I'm going to put it at a tilt for the Republican AI. And finally, we've got the biggest race of them all. That's down in North Carolina. It's an open seat to replace Roy Cooper. Republicans have Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson and Democrats have Attorney General Josh Stein. Robinson is definitely a fan of Donald Trump. He's got a lot of energy. He's probably going to be one of the most notable nominees in the general election. Josh Stein is 
definitely less of a character, but he's looking to be a check on the Republican legislator. And sometimes bland is what voters are looking for. Now, like Trump, Robinson is going to get a lot of voters to turn out for him and against him. He's considered highly controversial, and he's made a lot of statements in the past that he's going to have to try to defend. It's a difficult task. Both of them have won statewide before. I could see either of them winning. The polling has been back and forth. In the end, I'm not really going to make a change at this point in time. I'm going to assume that because Stein is a little bit less controversial, there's going to be some voters that vote for Trump at the top of the ticket, but cross over and support Stein for governor. I think the Republican supermajority in the legislature might be another factor. It is unpredictable, and Robinson is definitely in this race. I would not be shocked at all if he won, but for right now, I'm going to put this as a tilt for Stein. So that comes out to eight seats for the GOP, three for the Democrats. There's no flips and no pickups on this map, but the Democrats have a target in New Hampshire. Republicans have a target in North Carolina. Washington is kind of the dark horse state where there's an outside chance something emerges, but for the time being, that is likely to stay blue. So that's it. Maybe there's a scandal that comes out and one of these other states becomes a little bit more competitive. We'll see what happens as we go, but for now, that's the updated 2024 governor's map. So let me know in the comments, how does your map look for the month of July? Are you following any of these races closely and you see something else happening? Let me know what you think down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to help support the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.